Hi there, welcome back to the next video. And in this video, I will show you some of the very important system variables that you should know when you are doing the scripting within the ClickSense. These are so helpful that it can save you hours of work if you are not aware about it. So stay tuned. So first variable I have for you is the height prefix. And as the name suggests, it will going to hide all the fields that is prefixed with a particular string for example like this here we are saying set height prefix equals to underscore that means any field which is starting with underscore will be hidden like a system field so if you are if you have seen my previous video i have shown you that uh, if you have to see the system fields that means the fields which are getting created in the either in the script editor or click sense system creates you if you have to see that you need to forcefully enable the option of system fields into the expression editor in the front end so so suppose that uh, you have some of the fields in your data set which you don't want the developers to see uh, by default like any other variable so if, if you want to hide all of those fields then and if they are starting with underscore then you can set this variable that set height prefix equals to underscore then all those fields will be hidden like the system field and you have to basically um, forcefully enable the option to see the system fields option like a system variable similarly you have the height suffix that means for example if you have the fields which are suffixed with a special value like percentage and you want to hide it from the normal developers so that uh, they are not messing up with those important fields then you can use the option of hide suffix it's pretty straightforward that's why I am not uh, going in script editor and uh, implementing it. But I will really encourage that you go in as you see this and try to implement it. Now, uh, the next one I have is the include. So this variable specifies a file that contains text that you should be that should be included in the script. The entire script can be put in this file and system will execute it very very important and i just can't emphasize how much time it can save you in scenarios like somebody has already developed a script and uh, you want to use it as a first script and then further want to enhance it so instead of copying and pasting uh, this option will optimize your code so how you write it is like this dollar and then the brackets include equals to script.txt now this script.txt will contain the script from any other uh, clicksense application uh, which uh, you want uh, for which uh, you know a script is useful for you and you want to execute it for further development and then further modify it for your own need so this way you will be able to execute it and uh, you can specify even multiple statements like um, script one script two script three or maybe uh, include equals to hr if something is coming from hr hr script or txt operation script or txt finance script or txt and it will keep on executing it in the order in which you have specified so very very useful and uh, handy function in those scenarios where you want to uh, execute it and think like a scenario where multiple people need to Execute it so they don't have to just copy paste they will just reference the script.txt file and whenever somebody is updating the script and next time you are running it you don't have to go through the pain of copying and pasting because somebody has just updated a particular value within the script so a very very useful I found it very useful so can't emphasis enough and that's why I wanted to include here in this uh, video I think I have one more last one yeah very important which is uh, open URL timeout it defines the timeout for the web URL many times I have used and I think pretty much you have used or you want to use the variable uh, the sorry the data which uh, is on the web and uh, you don't want that your application should wait like forever like 20 minutes is basically the default time as I have mentioned 
to wait for 20 minutes. If you want to specify like five minutes or 10 minutes, things like that, then you can set this variable like this. Set open URL timeout. So if a uh, script is taking time beyond 10 minutes to execute it, it will time out and your application will further execute the code. So these are some of the very, very important and I use it pretty regularly. So I thought of sharing it with you guys and uh, I hope it, you will find it useful and uh, be able to use it going forward and uh, optimize your code uh, in, in a way uh, that is readable to you, that is uh, executable to you based on all these dynamic features. So that's pretty much it. I would encourage you to implement these and I will meet you in the new video with a new topic.